Yeah. Um, Kenya's athletes honestly have failed to impress this time around. In your view, what is the problem? I wouldn't say that it's the Kenyan athletes that have failed. I think in every preparation there are uh, structures that uh, guide the preparations. And I want us to look at from the 20, under 18. Some of the athletes came from under 18. And I think we might want to say that uh, they have been overloaded with activities coming from the African Cross Country Championship that we had only uh, two weeks. And then we had one day for the trials for the Commonwealth. And then two weeks, they're off to the Commonwealth Games. So I still believe that uh, uh, that uh, we need to look at this and, and see how best we can uh, learn from this and push it forward. So you see, if you were to heap any blame, you'd say the organization was off. The, that is one. And I think uh, as we speak now, you know, we don't have the like coaches association. So basically that technically brings you down to the agents, technical team manager and coaches. And of course, they are betrayers okay. who are supposed to help the athletes okay. when they're in problem. Like, for example, the year ago issue now that uh, he should be uh, be assisted in arbitration and somebody should be looking into that case. So those are some of the structures we are saying that has to come in place as we prepare. I know there's an argument that uh, they are saying that uh, since like the Asian, the European and the Americans take five years to prepare, that they have never done any, any better. But uh, I am one of the person who actually benefited from that plan because I brought in three gold and uh, one Olympic silver. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, uh, yes, we need, we need to, to, to find a structure and, and plan in advance. For example, after but this, we are looking at the 2020 Olympics. And there's the, Qatar, there's the World Championships next year as well. Exactly. Yes. I mean, uh, and you are telling me that these are the same athletes who are going to face the same procedure. But, but what, what I don't understand, Bono Kihuri, allow me to interrupt you, is if you say there was a challenge with the organization, honestly, this is not the first time we are taking Kenyans not, to yes. a big event That's like true. this. That's We've been true. doing this for so many. Why yes. would we make such basic mistakes in 2018? I, I think one mistake that we are definitely doing, we are thinking we are the, the kings of the world, but we are forgetting other countries are upgrading. We are not depreciating. Okay. We are doing well, yes, but yeah. other countries are learning better. They are working very hard. They are hungrier to, than us. They I are hungrier than some, us. And they are putting all the necessary, all the necessary uh, uh, structures in place. Uh, look at our neighbor Uganda here. I mean, we, 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 we saw the Olympics that we, we, we lost, the, we lost the, um, the, the marathon itself. And, and up to now, uh, I don't think that we have, uh, we have, uh, we have learned that. And I think it's is, 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 is a wake-up call. I actually want to talk to you a bit about Uganda. Two gold medals that should have been Kenya's. Should we be worried? And some articles are actually, some writers are out there saying Kenya needs to be very worried about our Uganda neighbors. I think or it's did the, the, get worry, lucky? the worry that we have is, is one of the reasons why we are letting them go around for Uganda. I know these are athletes who have ran for this country mm -hmm. before, and maybe they have been denied an opportunity to get into the national team. And I think that's where the question comes in. Why is it our athletes are opting to go out there to run for other countries compared to this country? There has to be something which is not happening that should happen. Are we a victim of our own success? that we have so many athletes in Kenya with so much talent and few races. So a few athletes would say, you know what, if I can cross the border and get better treatment in Uganda, Qatar, Bahrain, I, for example. I, I don't think that the athletes really hate this country that much to give their nationality to another country. There has to be a reason why they are divide, dividing this. And, 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 uh, and one of the reasons is that even as former athletes who are here basically play, play a very little role in, in, in helping athletics in this country. Mm -hmm. And we should be involved more. But, but I think uh, as much as we, have, we are harvesting so many athletes, we should also have a mechanism to see how well we are going to take care of them. Because I believe even these athletes who are in the Commonwealth will just become as us, okay. if not better, for the worse. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, um, if you look at the young athletes, now would you say that, okay, let's talk about two things. First of all, the absence of the, some of the names we've known. They did not go for the Commonwealth Games uh, for one reason or the other. Let's talk a bit about that and also about what it now means for the younger athletes who have been forced to step up. In your view, was it right for some elite athletes to say, I'm not interested in the Commonwealth Games and yet it's a chance to represent Kenya? Again, I think it, it goes back to the treatment that probably we are getting from the, the associations and the federations. You think it's about the treatment? It's not that I, I, I Commonwealth that has no money? I, I, I don't see why an athlete would want to say, I don't want to participate in a certain event. There has to be a reason 
that it, it is making athletes, our athletes don't compete for this country. Either the, there is a lot of frustrations before all these elections happens, the selection uh, structure which is going on. Yes, we are hearing the standard, the way it's supposed to be done. But if you look backward, you and me know that uh, probably that's not the case. Because you don't see how an athlete can come from, uh, from uh, the, the all African uh, cross country. You have two weeks. The, the country says you, you're going to have a national tr uh, commonwealth trials for one particular day. Mm -hmm. that, that is probably very, very heavy uh, overload to an athlete to do that. And I think those are some of the things that athletes are looking and saying, look, why should I then suffer uh, to go and try and uh, make a point that I can't make? Because they know they are fit when they are not fit and they know what they, they should do and what the expectations are even higher than the results. Okay. L l I want to find out from you, in the run-up to the games, and this might be tied in with what you said about disorganization being a key challenge this time around, we know that Nyayo, Kasarani, under construction. And there's a lot of back and forth, even, even about conditions of where some of the hotels the athletes were staying in. Could these have contributed to some of the missed opportunities in Gold Coast as a... As someone who's gone for international competitions like this one, can that have such an effect on you? That oh, yes, yes, that's, that's huge. I mean, for me, if I was a coach and given the opportunity, I don't see why our athletes should stay in, uh, in, uh, in the West while the, the, the field is in Kasarani. I would probably be more economical to, to keep them in Kasarani, whereby they will go out there for their morning run, they come back, there's a walking distance, and, and you do that. That, I think, basically is, is one thing that is happening. You know, if, if I look at myself when I was in Japan, I went to Japan when I was 19 years old. I was very young, and I got the guidance even from what event to participate. I was participating in 1500, mm -hmm. and I was told that within this 1500, you will not qualify to go to the Olympics. So what then did we do? I was guided through 5,000 meters, 10,000 meters, and eventually and up in the I was directed that if you try the, the, the marathon, it is easier, and it, you will definitely get a seat. And look, this is where I am. And I think those are some of the guns. You cannot be a, 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 an agent you cannot be at the same time you're a team manager, you cannot be at the same time you're a coach, and you are also a, 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 a technical uh, advisor to, to a team. I think those responsibilities must be divided and given to different people who can then in turn look at uh, what athletes are doing. Once we, we lose one race, the next thing automatically is the technical bridge to sit and improve in the next race mm -hmm. because it's not nothing very difficult. So a lot it's of something lessons. we've done mm -hmm. many, many times ahead. Look at the 800 meters. It was sit and then win. That's all we need. We do not need to pace. We do not need to sit all the way to do the hard work yes. and then end up with nothing. I think that is just very, very logical. It is not rocket science for any coach to understand that when you lose one race, the next race should be a, 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 a progress. You need, we need to learn from our mistakes. So two things, uh, if you're, you know, for you watching this broadcast, what are your thoughts about the Commonwealth Games? That gold medal that we waited for as a nation for almost seven days, finally getting it yesterday, thanks to that young man. What are your thoughts? 2242 is our SMS line. Use the hashtag Citizen Extra as well uh, on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and I'll read a bit of your feedback. And from about 9.43 uh, a.m., we'll be taking you live to the... Uh, Commonwealth Games where the women's uh, rugby sevens is going on. Team Kenya, the women's team will be playing against New Zealand and of course the only station that's bringing you live coverage of the Commonwealth Games, we will take you live for that shortly. I want to take you back to 2016. Yes. 2016, Rio fiasco. As a nation, <laughs> did we fully explore what happened in Rio? Did we understand the issues? Did we implement the, the, the recommendations that were given? Um, so what have we learned from that experience? Uh, we tend to have a tendency of making a lot of mistakes. As much as we make them forward, we don't learn from them. And, and uh, let me look, we look at this. Uh, if you look at the Commonwealth Games or even the Olympics, we have 30 disciplines. How many federations do we have? About. Uh, uh, maybe 22 or so, mm -hmm. then why do we have to have a team in the Commonwealth or in the Olympics with only 11 disciplines? So that al already, it is an opportunity that has missed for us to get a medal for those federations that are not taking a team to the Olympics or to the Commonwealth Games. Let me try and understand wh what you're trying to say. We should have taken more athletes or fewer? I'm, tr I'm trying to understand what no, you're saying. No, we, we have 23 disciplines in y the Commonwealth Games. Yes. 
we only have 11 disciplines that are participating as for Kenya team. Yes. So, I mean, that is already a missed opportunity that these other federations that have not been able to take the, the athletes, why? Maybe we could have gotten something exactly. more. Exactly, uh -huh. if there was uh -huh. a participation in that. Yes. And I think that is one of the reasons why we must sit and, and look at that and all the federations must come on in place and say, yes, we must all take our teams. Look at uh, uh, South Africa, look at Australia, look at even India. They have harvested a lot of gold medals. Why? Because the, the team is huge. They are, uh, they are diversing into, into different sports. And I think that's something we should do. If then we don't need all those federations sitting doing nothing over years that we never see mm -hmm. other federations even participating. Where we have federations like wrestling. Have we ever participated in a wrestling in any event, in, 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 in any championship? I don't think so. And I think these are some of the things we need to address and make sure that every federation is really working hard to push and see that we have a young athlete who does wrestling somewhere and can be able to be seen. What do, what do our federations need as a priority right now? And of course, we know that we have a new sports uh, cabinet secretary. Um, and what, sort of, what do you think should be his focus point? Do the federations need money? Do they need uh, expertise? Do they need... And of course, there have been fears that some federations also misappropriate money, that there are chairmen who sit on those federations for years and, the, the, you know, nothing changes, but the chairmen seem to be getting wealthier and wealthier. Well, uh, I, I know that uh, there is a lot that is wanting for us to be able to move forward as a team. And I believe that uh, all these issues that are coming now, some of them are not very new. And we really need somebody who can address them. In one way or another, the Ministry of the Federations must come together, the NOC itself must bring the Federations together, and they come up with a discussion and agree a way forward. That's one. Number two, like for example, if we look at uh, the Olympics in 2020, already uh, with the Ministry and myself, we have already secured a uh, host city in Japan which is Kurume City. It will be and of hosting. course you had your training in, in Japan. Yes, yes. and, and it, was, it was really a very good opportunity for us to negotiate and we have negotiated. And, and, and uh, that opportunity came in simply because they understand me, I understand Japanese, and it was very easy for me to what, what do you mean by host city? So k Team Kenya can go there for, a month in advance? For, and for three weeks. Oh, for three weeks. They will go there. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and also we have had a very good package that was sponsored by Kurume City itself. Uh, we just need to, to push that into ratifying that and making it official so that we know in, 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 in 2020, three weeks before the, 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 the event, Kenya team will be in Kurume City and they will acclimatize there. They will then from there, it is a one hour and 40 minutes to fly to Tokyo for the village, which they will do, it's been catered for. And then from there, three days, I think two days after the village, they will have a place to stay as they, 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 they condition themselves to, to try and fly back. And, and I think those are some of the things I really need to do to, to make sure that we are focusing forward. Now, that being said, the platform set, then it rolls backward to see that uh, all the federations must probably come up with what they want during the 2020 because venues have to be looked for. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to be booked because other other people are also uh, other athletes are also using these venues, and those are some of the some of the, the issues that we need to sit and address now that the Commonwealth is over. Looking into 2020, uh, and and also make sure we package our team. We know which team is going. We know where they will be training. Come food, we, we've never actually planned to, to, to actually arrange our, uh, put our athletes in the food that we are normally use. And give them time. We tend to use what is being given in the village. Which is dangerous. Exactly, yes. and that will And we have had of athletes who have had stomach issues, will, for will example. Will knock you out in one or two, on, on one, or one occasion or the other. My goodness. Do that. So those are some of the preps that we really need to focus on and do. Because for the team, yes, we must look like, for example, if, if you look at Rio, what we have not done since 1968, we have never won a gold medal in 10,000 meters yes. since 1968. The last one is Naftali Temu who won it. Okay, what is it that we have not been doing right? Are we not seeing it? And what are we expecting to do in, 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 uh, in, in 2020? You know, so those are some of the really heavy, heavy, heavy uh, questions that uh, are around us and we must find a solution to tackle them because if we don't, then uh, road racing, it's not a solution for us for mm. the track. You cannot train on the road and then say you're going to, to perform on the track.
but you can form, you can train on the track and perform well on there. Look at Elio okay. Kipchoge has That's done it brilliantly. Yes, yes, you're right. Elio Kipchoge example. has done it from zero, from the track, all the way to the last one. And he can go even to two oceans to 56 kilometers or 89. He has done it, and this is the way it is supposed to be. So if we want... But we are doing it the other way if around. We want, if we want a team for 2020, we must make sure we keep these young boys and girls on the track, no road racing until 2020 when they graduate to go to the road racing. Okay. And we must have a plan for that. A lot of expectations on them right now. I'm, I'm curious to get your predictions on where you think Kenya will finally end up. In 2010, it was 12 gold, 11 silver, 9 bronze. 2014, it was 10 gold, 10 silver, 5 bronze. We are, we are number 18 now, really? if I'm not wrong. Yeah, around okay? there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So even if we win 5 gold, yeah. we'll probably end up number 10. I'm not saying it, it is wrong. Kenya team has done the very best it can in within the conditions that it has. Okay. But we must understand that all the other countries in the world have done much better than we are thinking. And it is that a high is time. worrying. It is worrying. I can give you an example of Brazil. Brazil is not that it's not a good country in football. It is the best in the world, right? But what has happened? Other countries have built academies they, mm -hmm. and they have come up and the, some of them have beaten Brazil. And that is exactly what is going to happen to Kenya. Unless we must now add an extra science and technology towards the natural gifted talent that we have uh -huh, today. Uh -huh. We must rethink. We must also create space for, for these athletes to train. We should not be talking about the, 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 the tarmac or the road or whatever. We should have at least uh, and, 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 and I think so the special secluded facilities. And, and I think the other thing is like uh, I went to Japan, I think, a few years ago, and I went to the Japan Training Institute. What I, I, I found out was amazing that the, the athletes who will be competing in the 2020 Olympics were actually from 15 years old. So they are in the institute for five years before they appear in the Olympics. And this institute provides them with what? Accommodation, everything, everything. education? Any uh, training you need, even education. You go to school, you come back to the training for the first goodness. center. Uh -huh. and, and I think one of the things that we, we really need to do in this country, I know facility is a big thing that we require. But we, need, we, need, for we need sports centers. Sports centers in which way? A, a center that holds about five or six sports so that young people can come out of work and go and train. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait for the, the rain to stop so that you can train in the natural yes. environment. Those are the, the centers we need. And if we can spread them within the eight old regions, like the provinces, okay. we only need eight training centers. Uh, at the coast, we have the Madoka area, which can hold uh, uh, high altitude training. Mm -hmm. That is one. In Kigali, we have one which we use. In Eroti, we have others. And we can look at others in all different areas. Even if we have four, we start with four centers. That one will give us an opportunity for no reason of saying we don't have a facility to train. And as, as much as we are looking forward, what I'm saying is that we must upgrade from our training facilities. We must uh, put in some of the uh, uh, associations that are required, like the coaching. We must see that uh, the, 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 the technical uh, department is in place. As much as we are, we are gifted, we are only going to run so much so far. But then the rest of the world is really looking at us. Wow, I, I, I think uh, you've, quite, you've put it quite well. So you've given us a very good strategy for 2022 Olympics. But we have... 2020. 2020, I beg your pardon, Olympics. Uh, too many politicians in this uh, studio. Uh, but next year, there's the, world, there's the World Championships. Is it too soon? Might, we, might that be too soon or too short a period for us to adequately prepare ourselves for those World Championships? And also, do you think elite athletes might be more interested in the World Championships than they were in these Commonwealth Games? We, we, we just need to... I think, I think uh, the, 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 the issue here is, is, is one... Athletes are also have their own agents. Yes, and they have their. Uh, I think their own programs they also. They have their own programs. Mm -hmm. They must uh, participate. I think it's only fair to for us to try and sit and agree with the agents that this is what we want this our athletes to do. I believe as an athlete who you are, you are also entitled to make your uh, to, to to sustain your life mm -hmm. if that is what it, you have to do. On the other hand, you are also expected to represent your country and as at, at the highest level. So how then do we balance this? Because I know that uh, there is the Diamond League that they must participate, which is what it is. 
And then on this hand, we have that World Championship, we have the, the Olympic Games coming up. So this is, again, a seat that must be sat and agreed upon. Because other countries, what I see they do, uh, except Kenya, I think uh, other countries plan very well. So like Ethiopia, they will set up and they say, you're not competing to any other event until the Olympic Games are over. Mm -hmm. And that is set and understood. And I think, I'm not saying that we should do that, but we should come to an agreement whereby an athlete feels uh, more comfortable preparing, having rest time, challenging the next event as we move on. And, and I think we have a lot of athletes we can spread around. Okay. The young ones are coming from the youth. We can give them the world championship and make sure we push them in, in a proper manner. They come back, the senior goes, so that we have Olympics, all this. We yes. have team A, team B, and team C looking at all alternative years because I, I believe as much as you can be talented, you will one time get tired. Yes. And that is, I think, what the seniors are looking at. If you look at 20, 2017, it was a bit very, very tough for them. Now we have now 2020. So Coming from my assumption yes. would be, let me rest the Commonwealth and let me focus in the World uh, Olympics in, okay. in the next and it years. And it makes and sense. It makes sense. And, and I think we have to agree to that. But then uh, the structure, uh, the roadmap to whatever events, calendars events that we're having must also coordinate with the athletes programs that th that's what they're, 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 they're earning their living from. Okay. Because we are not paying these athletes. We only re remunerate them when they win uh, a medal. And, and that, I think, it, it is not something that you can say you will count on. Yes. It is not a guarantee. And uh, even if and it's sometimes guaranteed, it, takes forever. it is only three, three, three people who are guaranteed for that. Three gold, athletes guaranteed. Silver gold, silver, and, and bronze. Bronze, yes. You know? So uh, as, as much as, as we, we are going to appreciate our athletes, we also must look at the nitty gritties of every day, the injuries they go through, the equipment they use, and, and their well-being, their families. Who is taking care of them? Are we really pushing them so hard that they can't even breathe? Or we, we, do we really have to die for these medals that we are not taking care of our athletes? I think those are some of the things that, uh, like, like when I was in Japan, I was only 19. I basically was very new. I only could speak a bit of Japanese. Mm -hmm. Nobody could speak a lot of English. So translation was a bit uh, a problem. And, and, and I believe that I was really taken care of very well because I never worried about what to eat, where to sleep. And, 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 and one thing they also actually told me is that uh, when you feel lonely because your home is down there in Africa, talk to us. I'm your father now since I'm in Japan. And we need that, so that, that, family, we need atmosphere. that family atmosphere mm -hmm. of, of just comforting the athlete, looking into other, uh, an athlete should feel comfortable talking to a coach that uh, I have a problem, not hiding and then running with the injury, making it worse. Mm -hmm. You know, those are some of the things we need a more relationship to, to, to coach an athlete or, or somebody. If, if somebody meets D Douglas on the way and say, Douglas, I have a problem. I want you to assist me. I think that's a good, a good thing that uh, should happen with, with our athletes. But they should not feel uh, pressure. They should not feel, they should not hide from training so that uh, they, they, or injuries so that they just make the team because mm -hmm. they are forced to do so. That should, that should not happen. That should not be their, their yeah. focus.